In this video, I'll introduce you to the XAM Pivot Grid Control in NetAdvantage for data visualization and specifically how you can use it to bind to flat data sources. To illustrate this, I've created a small sample here, which I'll run first, just to give you an idea of what the application looks like when run. So basically, we have a window which contains the XAM Pivot Grid Control and the XAM Data Selector Control. The XAMPP Data Selector Control works with the XAMPP Pivot Grid, allowing the user to move dimensions and measures around much like they would, they would do that in Excel. So basically, the goal is to, to have the user drag and drop dimensions and measures from the list above into the cells here in order to construct a specific view of the data. And in the Pivot Grid, of course, we see all the standard functionality you can expect from it value hierarchies, filtering, and so on. The measures and dimensions shown in the XAMPP data selector control have been automatically generated based on the bound data source. And you can see that they include both dimensions and measures, giving the user guidance on which data attributes can be used for dimensions and for measures in the, in the view below. So let's now take a look at how this sample project is built and how we have bound to flat data. Okay, so we have a sample application which consists of a single window which contains the XAM pivot grid control and the XAM data selector. So what I've done here is I've, I've basically dragged and dropped them from the toolbox to replicate this view, you can do the same. So I've already done that and just to illustrate the XAML that's generated so I have a grid control which contains two columns and the first column contains the pivot grid control which is bound, which takes as its data source the binding context of the entire window and also a pivot data selector which does the same. So let's now take a look at the code behind to see how we're setting data to the data context of this window. Right, so once the window gets loaded, this event handler gets called, which retrieves data from a data set I've added to, uh, to this project. So once a data table is filled with data from this uh, Northwind data set, and again, uh, this may be any data set in any form you can bind to any object which implements the iEnumerable interface. So in this case, I'm retrieving data from a Northwind data set, uh, which basically gives me a data table. So I wouldn't want to see all the different columns from the data table. So I'm creating a link query here, copying some of, of the properties of the rows into an anonymous object using this query. So once I've done that, and again, you don't even need to do this. You can use uh, your own data table directly. But in my case, there's way too many attributes and I'd like to cut those down. So this is why I've created an anonymous object, which basically contains just a subset of the available attributes. So I start by initializing a flat data source object. I then set its queue property to generate new cube with the element name with the name of the type of the elements within my bound collection. I then set the columns to order date, order date, and also the rows to ship country to have the XAM pivot grid display some view when, when launched. If you, if you do not feed in these two properties, you will see an empty pivot grid and the user would have to drag and drop measures and dimensions from the data selector into the areas below or into the pivot grid itself to construct a view. These two properties and actually this measures property as well are being set to construct an initial view that the user is presented with when they open the application. So once we've set these three, properties here, specifying the view, we initialize a connection settings object and we set it to the connection settings property. 
And in the cube settings also, we add an instance of the cube metadata class, which contains the display name that will show up in the data selector. So once we've done all that, we need to set the item source for the flat data source, and that's just converting the result of our link query to a list and setting it to the item source. So once we've done that, we're ready to set the data context of the entire window to the flat data source. So once that is done, the XAMPP pivot grid directly binds to it using this expression and is able to show the data that's retrieved from the Northwind database. Running the application again, you can see how easy it was to bind to flat data and to generate an initial view that the user is presented with. So this hopefully demonstrates how easy it is to use the XAMPP pivot grid to add it to your application and to deliver a flexible view containing pivots to your users. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.